No, Lorenzo can wrestle. He keeps good position. Has a wicked single to his left. But Jory Vogue is tough. Jory's got a big head snap. He's got a lot of different arsenals. Sometimes Lorenzo will double underhook, but Jory can headlock too. So. Jory Vogue's out of Lakeville, Minnesota. Also an NCAA qualifier in 2023. So two times that he has made it to NCAAs. Was fifth in the Big 12 in 2023. And he was on fire last year because the NCAA is not only beat number one, but beat number two and number four seed as well. And they go out of the circle. Referees for this one are Carlos Mansell and Evan Burchett. Watchful eyes of Kenny Ritchie from up high as well, supervising our referees. Looks like a little more blood coming here for Jury Volk. Everybody in Oklahoma and nationally should know Kenny Ritchie done so much for the sport and so much for officiating. So a minute 12 left here in the opening period, 125 pounds. Coach, we have three matchups of top 30 wrestler against top 30 wrestler here today. There are five ranked wrestlers on the side of Wyoming and Oklahoma. If you kind of extend the rankings out a little bit, Oklahoma's got six of 10 wrestlers who are ranked in the top 35. So kind of give us the appraisal of who has the advantage maybe in some of these weight classes. Honestly, the advantage is who comes to wrestle. That's the deal. Obviously, here at 25, you have to save extra points, which we're looking real good at doing right now because in a 5-5 split, bonus points makes a difference. I mean, 25 them, 33, I'm thinking should be us, 41, but you wouldn't want to bet a whole lot of money on it. You know, uh, and and a lot depends on our health there. So it's it's just going to be tough every match. Well, hopefully every match. There's a couple that won't be maybe the other way. 30 seconds remaining here in the opening period. Still no score at 125 between number two, Jory Volk, and number 33, Antonio Lorenzo for Oklahoma. I like the way this match is playing out right now. It's a slow match, and part of this is you watch even when the whistle blows, Lorenzo is in real good stance. Tough to beat, good position. We're going to hit the end of the opening period with no score here at 125. You look shoot. at Antonio Lorenzo is one of 17 newcomers to the roster for the second-year head coach, Roger Kish. He's gone out and gotten three former NCAA qualifiers. We'll see some of them in Gavin Sachs and Cleveland Belton and Bradley Hill a little bit later on. We'll see Bradley Hill at 197, but he's reshaped this roster via the transfer portal. Coach, that's that's what you have to do these days. And how many starters are transfers? Oh, gosh. Now no, you got no me. No looking. No looking. No looking. <laughs> I believe it is six for Oklahoma today. Actually, it's eight out of ten, but I looked. <laughs> you looked. Well, okay, but Moshe Schwartz had been at Oklahoma already. He's a transfer, but right. he spent a season. Okay. okay. So I was a little closer. Out of the circle they go once again. You know, the longer this goes, Lorenzo gaining a tad more confidence against the number two ranked wrestler in the country. We keep getting these stoppages for the nosebleed of Jerry Volk. Yeah, and that doesn't hurt. You know, if you think, hey, this guy's really tough, you know, all American and well when you have time to compose yourself you know although I would say this also Jory Volk is not putting the kind of pressure that he's capable of doing so we're in this match Volk can wrestle on top all the Wyoming guys can wrestle on top we'll see what happens there so Volk having wrestled last night in overtime losing to Troy Spratley so he had a lengthy one and a close one up in Stillwater did Volk last night no, and as I mentioned, had he continued wrestling, he'd have won the match. He has stated he thinks he can beat any 25-pound in the country. I agree, but it depends on which jury Volk is wrestling. So Volk with the escape here in period two and a 1-0 lead. Only 10 seconds of riding time for Lorenzo there before Volk got out. What was significant is Lorenzo obviously has been much more passive, but when he's on the edge, turns his opponent around and shoots him off the mat. That's real important. Matt Savvy. There's that single, not close to getting in. 
has a near arm far leg on that side as well. Now, Jory Volk likes to do this. He snaps it and snaps it. He'll pull pancake you. He'll chase a leg. Can't get that angle. Good defense. Twenty seconds remaining, period two, and just barely they went out. No scoring, just the escape from Volk to start the period. And the thing about Lorenzo is he can wrestle. He just needs to be more aggressive and get his shots off. Now, here you want to be smart. You want to try and sneak one in there, but that's nice. Oh, that was nice. Lost the armor on a fireman's. Iranian lifted up. And time oh. will run out. No scoring there. But a good shot. The, the best attempt we've seen from Antonio Lorenzo. Real good shot with an opportunity to score if the clock time doesn't run out. Well, interesting here. You know, Volk elects, they elect to go neutral. So it'll stay 1 0. And if they think they need bonus points, and of course, depending upon what happens the rest of this period, they could have Vogue choose top. There's that single. Oh, he's got a, he's got a snake from there. You got to get your knee on the inside. Look at this. Look at this. Nothing awarded yet. That's two and three, and three <laughs> points there for Antonio Lorenzo. That's a big three point takedown. Uh, his leg was trapped, but he was behind both arms. I think that's going to stand. And Mark Branch has thrown in the challenge brick here. He's going to ask our referees, Carlos Mansell and Evan Burchett, to look at it. Well, the challenge was initially, while he was in position, he was prone. He was flat on the mat. But I think he got his to his base with body parts in bounds. So I think that might stand. And we don't have the benefit of showing you a replay. They're looking at it over at the monitor, but obviously it's critical. A takedown awarded to Lorenzo would make it 3-1. That would be huge. And a minute 28 left here in the period. What a win it could be. You see Teon Ware and head coach Roger Kish over there for Oklahoma talking with Antonio Lorenzo. And Antonio Lorenzo has not done much, but what he's done, he's done well. Two shots, two opportunities to score. What a tone setter it could be for Oklahoma at 125 if they could upset the number two ranked wrestler in the country. Well, that would be real big. And then what happens is they may have him go top. But if you get away, now you got another point. And I think, as well, we've had all these stoppages, the, the bloody nose of Volk. That has probably aided Lorenzo a little bit, just to kind of gain his breath and, and make sure that he's ready. If nothing else, for composure. But he's a well-conditioned athlete. Plus, he really doesn't do a whole lot to get you know out of breath. But what he does, he does well. And I'm real impressed with what he's doing right now. So they continue to have a look at it. I'm trying to look at the replay monitor down there, see what kind of view they have. Well, you're a better man than I, because I can hardly see you. <laughs> that is uh, to, to your benefit. <laughs> I don't know. They call this the Beauty and the Beast uh, broadcast, you know, and I'm not the beauty. <laughs> we, we used to have those, and some schools still do with uh, women's gymnastics oh, yeah. wrestling at the same time. We started that here. Mm -hmm. We did that here. They don't do it any longer. I don't know why. It's just been a few years since that uh, well, since that stopped. I actually do know why. The women hated being the beasts. Wow. <laughs> no takedown, so it's overruled. Oh, oh. What a great challenge by Mark Branch, though, the Wyoming head coach. And now Evan Burchett is over explaining it to Sooner coach Roger Kish. So one nothing it remains Jory Volk. And unfortunately we don't have the opportunity for a replay. So it, what do you think the ruling was that, that they were out of bounds when the takedown occurred? <laughs> to be honest with you you know I couldn't hear what the official did. There were body parts in bounds. So it should not have been out of bounds. So overruled the takedown for Lorenzo. A true one nothing lead. No riding this. time either way. And Lorenzo's got that <laughs> heel. And there is the takedown. Antonio Lorenzo with under a minute left now does have the 3-1 lead. 
And here's the beauty of sport. You know, on paper, you're thinking, let me think, Vogue, Lorenzo, you know, bet a lot of money there. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And we are in trouble out of bounds. And it looks like it's going to be one. Did he give one? There we go. And, and really, that could have been two so easily, but good hustle, good awareness on the part of Lorenzo. So just the one-point escape there for Volk. Those are how he has scored his two points. Sh Lorenzo with a three-point takedown. Under 30 seconds left. And not a bad shot. Volk is so tough in that front headlock position. But Lorenzo likes that seatbelt. Remember, there's been no caution for stalling, so that's not at play at this stage. Yeah. Now... Vogue has a great Greco background. And outside the circle and off the mat they go. Seven seconds left. Oklahoma's Antonio Lorenzo trying to upset the number two ranked wrestler in the country. Head and hands down. Good position. Oh, oh, oh! No, no. Nothing at the end. And it's an upset for Oklahoma at 125 from Antonio Lorenzo. The final is 3-2. And the Sooners take a 3-0 dual lead. And that, my friend, is the wonder of sport. And that's why you never say never. And you never let anybody tell you what you can do and what you can't. Let's big picture it as well. He had a takedown as well that was overruled. It was just a little out of bounds. That's exactly so right. That's a really good performance for Antonio Lorenzo. And ran out of clock on another fine shot. What a big boost that can be for Antonio Lorenzo this early in the year. So that is a couple of losses in a row now for Jury Vo, the number two ranked wrestler in the country at 125. And onward to 133 we go. Now, here's the interesting thing. Antonio took two losses just last week at the Dactronics Open. Okay, something turned. So much of wrestling is from the neck up. The 133, it is number 18 Cleveland Belton for Oklahoma and Stockton O'Brien. Stockton O'Brien came out really tough last night, battled hard. Eventually, he was just kind of big boyed by a fifth-year senior, maybe eight-year senior, Reese Whitcraft, who looked the best I've seen him. Inter right. Interesting dynamic going from one of the all-time great coaches to uh, one of the all-time great and great wrestlers to one of the all-time great wrestlers who before long will be one of the all-time great coaches as well in David Taylor. Yeah, what a, what a transition. The legendary John Smith. Electing to retire at the end of last year and David Taylor now the head coach at Oklahoma State. They are number three in the country though. Good roster. Outside the circle they go. Cleveland Belton for Oklahoma the senior from Corona, California. He's a double transfer from Oregon State and Arizona State. So spent a lot of time in the Pac-12. 2021 22 at Arizona State had a red shirt year prior to that and won a Pac-12 title in 2023 with a pin in the final then was 20 and 9 the Pac-12 runner-up at Oregon State last year and qualified for the NCAAs he is a two-time NCAA qualifier and now he's at a different weight he dropped and filled a big need for the Sooners he loves that front headlock he's got to bounce that opponent and get his arm a little loose he also likes to thigh pry from there but you got to have your arm a little looser for that Stockton O'Brien is there it is there it is okay snap and go behind drop your hips drop your hips O'Brien trying to hang on able to power his way out of it look at this good scrambling that was nice good so scrambling O'Brien is a transfer from Utah Valley and he got a ranked win over Dominic Zacone in the win over Campbell for Wyoming it's his second year as a Cowboy, 141 last year, and then he dropped down to 133. There was an injury to Cole Brooks, so they had to shuffle the weights around a little bit. Still no score. 45 seconds left in the opening period. Again, Oklahoma with a 3-0 dual lead and upset at 125 by Antonio Lorenzo. Well, and O'Brien impressed me a great deal 
in the beginning of the match. He couldn't withstand it, but this is a different pace. They're not going as hard. And so you may not see him fade. And even with that, I think he just got big boyed a little bit because he came to battle. Ten seconds left. Lorenzo, I, I, I'm sorry, uh, Belton is best when he's aggressive. There's that. Oh! Mm, will not get it. But well, here's the tough. deal. If you could do that, why haven't you tried that before? Because that was an easy score. Sometimes you see the clock running down and it makes you feel like you have to do something that maybe you should have been doing all along. What we do now with a minute to go, scream at him 10 seconds, Cleveland, 10 seconds. Caution there for an early start on top from O'Brien. No scoring in the opening period. Well, one of the things you'll probably see, and we didn't get to see much of it last night, but this Wyoming team are so tough with legs, of course. Nice standing switch. Oh, step over. There we go. Great reversal. He's got his claw in. We may see another reversal here, at least an escape for O'Brien. So it's good stuff there to start period two. A reversal for Belton and an escape for O'Brien, 2-1. You want some stutters, keep your opponent off balance and get back at that double. Pull the head on the opposite side, then post the hand as it comes up. But get back to that double. That was a quick and easy score apart from the clock. One minute into period two, so we are past the midway mark of this bout. Got a couple of ranked wrestlers coming up next at 141, Moshe Schwartz and Cole Brooks. This is a situation which Reese Whitcraft had him in uh, just last night, and he did an amazing pull pancake. But I'm right to, there it is. There's the pull pancake. <laughs> so three points for Cleveland Belton. He's having a strong second period, a 5-1 lead. And now he'll build a little bit of riding time with 30 seconds left. He could actually build significant riding time. That was real sweet. O'Brien well, able to get back to his feet. That meant return. Nice. And there it is. Swept the knee out. Now you want to look for wrist. Okay, or claw. There you go. You can't float on top. It's too much work. You get hit for stalling. Tie something up. A little slap of five from Sooner head coach Roger Kish for Cleveland Belton. He's got a reversal and a takedown here in the period to take a 5-1 lead. Sometimes he goes far ankle and drive on a, on a fresh start. That's really important in wrestling. You got to have a move to stop the first move. So a caution there was issued to Belton for a quick start. And I think some blood from the nose of O'Brien. They attend to that quickly and get him back out there. Maybe the change in altitude is responsible for all this blood on the part of Wyoming. <laughs> is that a thing? The, Let me tell you something. From the, Laramie? Not the travel, the change in altitude. Right. I competed in the junior national championships uh, when I was a junior in high school. And I'm out there wrestling, and I thought I was going to die and was afraid I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> out they go. That was a, a very active second period, really both ways. But the scoring all went to Cleveland Belton. The takedown for three and a reversal. An escape for O'Brien. 5-1 Belton. And now he'll start on top with 41 seconds of riding time. That's right. So if he stays on for 20 seconds, he can get himself... Another point, theoretically. Yeah, but what he did there is he got the ankle, but you can't hold the ankle. You got to drive with it, then chop your opponent. He can ride, but you got to get that man flat, or you got to get a wrist. So O'Brien, look up. He sees that 55 seconds. He he really needs to scramble out before five seconds are up, or else you can add another point for Belton for riding time at the end. And there's another caution on top for Cleveland Belton. So what happens, don't look at the official. 
just listen for the whistle and go. That's exactly what he did. Now chop it. There you go. So over a minute of riding time for Belton. His lead is in effect 6 1. You don't let him go here. And that'll be a caution. Mm. They say that Belton was the one forcing them to go out that time. What'd you think? Well, that probably was the case, but it's really tough when the guy's going forward. You know, you can't pull him back. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, and, and here's what's important. He's still riding, which he should be. Five seconds, eight seconds, that can go away real fast. I would have said keep him down longer, but there's the double. There's the double. Rock him back. Rock him back and hold him. So the quick escape there makes it 5-2, and there's three more for Belton. So now you add the riding time. You got 9-2, another go. point, and he's got a major decision, let Coach. Let him go right now. So you wonder, will he yeah, let him up? Look at the coaches. They're trying to get his attention. Tell him, Chad. Tell him. You're on top of it. So they let him go, and it's an escape for O'Brien. Remember, it's still one point of riding time that's going to come the way of Belton. It's essentially 9-3. Now a takedown gets him a major decision if he can get it, and he's got 45 seconds. Oh, that was an opportunity to post that hand as he was go walking forward. Set that double up again. And that's a point right there. That's the second caution for fleeing the mat against Belton. So it's a point for O'Brien. That changes the dynamic a bit. Well, he's still, he's got to ride him now in order to get that. Oh, wow. Good opportunistic wrestling. So once again, riding time is secure for Cleveland Belton. So it's 9-4 when you tack that on. Yeah, but what's happening here is Cleveland has stopped wrestling and he's changed the complexion of the match. He's already been hit twice for stalling. There's that double. Nothing. Can he get near fall? No. That's good hips right there. Drop your hips. So nothing's going to come out of this. It'll be a 9-4 win for Cleveland Belton and the Sooners when you tack on the riding time. And Oklahoma takes a 6-0 lead in the duel. Yes, but that easily could have been a bonus point match. And that was not smart wrestling. It was good wrestling. He wrestled well, but not smart. So Cleveland Belton gets the Sooners their second win to start this duel. They got an upset by Antonio Lorenzo at 125 as he upset number two, Jory Volk. It is number 27, Cole Brooks for Wyoming. And he will face Oklahoma 141 pounder, Moshe Schwartz, who is ranked number 10 this week. And here's the situation. The Oklahoma high school wrestler is on the other side and he <laughs> wants nothing more in this venue okay to come out on top and he can do it what i'm most concerned about here is conditioning because moshe schwartz is on the all hospital team he's tough he's talented he's got worlds of technique but he doesn't get to do the kind of training that he'd like to so if brooks goes the pace he did last night at least up until the end it could be challenging. Now, the other thing is Moshe Schwartz is dangerous. He can put you on your back from anywhere. As coach mentioned, Cole Brooks, the Wyoming wrestlers from Owasso and Collinsville High School, three state titles for the Cardinals there. And he's got oh, Schwartz. Golly, Look at Schwartz, and now he's got him on his back. He so was Schwartz so with beat. three. He was so beat on that. Riding tires should say near fall points four of them for Moshe Schwartz and that's that's just as you said That's what dangerous. That's the word you that's use for exactly Schwartz. Exactly right And here's the deal. I was talking with coach Kish and he's talking about two guys that are dangerous two guys that can scramble Well, and I said I like our chances in that battle <laughs> <laughs> And there's an example why he, that match could have been over there So Cole Brooks lost to Tegan Jameson at Oklahoma State last night. But as you said, so many close bouts. That was a sudden victory bout. He lost 7-4. He, he had the bout, much like 125, and he just backed off a bit. And that, that's what Coach Branch told me. You know, they've got to they've got to finish that match. You have to wrestle the whole match, and that's a quote. You got to get that finishing takedown. So Cole Brooks got injured last year, knee injury. And as we said, that's what 
caused Stockton O'Brien to bump up to 141 for the Cowboys last year. But Brooks is back and healthy, ranked number 27 this week. There's the and scrambling. There's the scrambling that Coach Kish was talking about. So if you're going to tilt them, you better make sure you got his hips secure. No, 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 no. I'll tell you in a second here. No, no. Okay, get that whizzer in. Minute 15 remaining in the opening period. So Moshe tends to get that whizzer and not use as much. Reinforce it on your thigh, get some pressure forward. Dangerous position call. Yeah, so Moshe has a great inside trip, but what happens is he doesn't get the man moving and get enough forward momentum. Sometimes he just steps, and if you do that, you can go to your back. But this kid, he's like a compass out there. He's got a great feel, great balance. I like that, a compass. I've, I don't think I've ever heard you refer to someone as a compass. <laughs> Moshe Schwartz with a takedown and four near fall points. The other interesting thing is the first move of the match was an arm drag by Moshe. And they almost beat us with it. They're, they're, this match is well scouted. They know what he's going to do. But knowing it and stopping it are two different things. <laughs> Brooks still with that left foot inside the circle. And time may run out with these two in this spot. And that is going to do it for the opening period. Most Schwartz, a 7-1 lead. He built 50 seconds of riding time. He is a senior from Franktown, Colorado. Transferred to Oklahoma from Northern Colorado. This is his third year as a Sooner after two years at Northern Colorado. So a five-year wrestler. He had his season cut short last year by injury after just five starts. And he was Oklahoma's starter at 141 two years ago. He had seven top 25 wins. And this guy is a, he's a veteran. I mean, he's a three-time NCAA qualifier is Moshe Schwartz. No, he's got it all because he has great composure as well. The only thing he hasn't had is good health, but he is a tough kid. He's a savvy kid, and he's fun to watch. And so is Cole Brooks. This is a good match. You got to watch his hips from underneath. Oh, look but at that underhook there. Oh, look at that legs in half. He, he's got to count. Now, you got to be careful here. More near fall points coming four of them and then a two-point reversal for Cole Brooks and and Brooks is really dangerous from bottom and dangerous even from his back good stuff here so 11-3 <laughs> that's major decision territory potentially for Moshe Schwartz then there's another escape for Moshe Schwartz so 12-3 he's got a minute 28 of riding time as well yeah so keep wrestling that's the deal. Keep wrestling. What you want to do is put this away. Another takedown puts it away, the major. As long as you keep wrestling. So got another period. Now you also have to be smart here because you know you have a very dangerous wrestler who can scramble well. So fundamentals. Schwartz and Brooks here at 141. Oklahoma has wins at 125 and 133 they call a caution there against Schwartz that's the first against him yeah and I don't think he was circling back in he was actually back in when when yeah. they gave that caution almost not sure the whistle didn't blow before he backed out of there 10 seconds left here eight total near fall points for so, Moshe Schwartz so in I this say, match great match for Schwartz and great effort for Cole Brooks. One period left. Moshe Schwartz has a minute 28 of riding time and a 12-3 lead. So he's in position to get a four-point major decision for Oklahoma. Oh, great Powerful. power double. And a quick takedown for Cole Brooks to start period three. So that's a stance check right there. Now you got to come back and improve your stance. The other thing is keep your elbows in. Keep your elbows in and he won't have that underhook. So the takedown is three for Brooks, one for Schwartz on the escape. 
Now 14-6 is what it would be when you tack on the riding time. Still major territory for Schwartz. Yeah, I wouldn't sit back on my heels like that. Now, see, normally he loves that overhook, and he's got a wicked headlock, but you're giving too much away. Brooks still has the left leg of Schwartz, but Schwartz has got him flattened out. And out they go. And they'll start him neutral with a minute 12 left here in the third period. Conditioning is a factor for motion, not because he doesn't work hard, but just training time, training ability with injury. But he's a tough kid. Yeah, that's giving away. <laughs> I'm just saying he's giving away too much, and then he takes it away. It's just shifty, isn't he, he Moses Schwartz? No, there's that compass in action. Back neutral, a stalemate. And 47 seconds left. One of the things, because it's amazing how little wrestling so many guys learn, this guy has a lot of different weapons, and they come in handy. You're talking about Schwartz. Yes. That guy. <laughs> There's a nice seat. Oh, he likes the seat belt, too. He's high on it there. That's interesting. He's eating up all sorts of clock here. Riding time is now secure for Moshe Schwartz, so it is 14-6. That would be a major decision if Brooks cannot score anything. So Oklahoma in position to get four and a major decision from Schwartz at 141. One last shot there by Brooks, but he won't get to him. And the final is going to be 14-6, major decision for Moshe Schwartz, the 10th-ranked wrestler in the country, and he gives Oklahoma a 10-0 dual lead. And a big, big, big-time match right there from Moshe Schwartz against a very tough and fierce competitor. Early near fall points that he got there in that first period that set the tone when it looked like Brooks was in position to put Schwartz on his back. I'd have bet a lot of money on it there. <laughs> <laughs> so 10 nothing Oklahoma through three bouts. They've won all three, two decisions and a major. And now we get to the closest matchup in the rankings. You've got number 21, Millie, Willie McDougal of Oklahoma. And for Wyoming, it'll be Gabe Willishell. Now, Willishell pinned Willie McDougal at the Big 12 Championships last year, Coach. Yeah, and Willishell looked really tough last night. One of two uh, Wyoming winners against that other Cowboy team. And uh, this is going to be a tough match now. Willie keeps good position. He's not easy to score on. He's the second coming of Tion Ware in that if you get his leg up in the air, he can take a nap. But the question is, how is he going to score on Willishell? Willie McDougal had a red shirt year at Oklahoma in 2020-21, and this is his fifth year as a Sooner. Remember in 2022, they, they brought him out for the Missouri match about mid-year, and he just went gangbusters. Won six straight, was the number two seed in the Big 12 championship, and made it to the finals. Yeah, no, he's tough. He is actually from Greensburg, PA, wrestled for Latrobe High School. Uh, Tom Legs Harvard was the coach for many, many years. A lot of memories there. I taught clinics there many times in the past. Probably worked out at... Uh, the All-American Wrestling Club with Coach Waller. Coach Waller's son uh, being an NCAA champion for me here a few moons ago. Wasn't that long ago. And his dad and I were college teammates. Has one of the best clubs in the country. Notice one thing, Willishell goes forward, he goes forward, he goes forward. Willishell, also a fifth-year wrestler, two-time NCAA qualifier, began his career at Edinburgh and was a qualifier for the NCAAs there in 2022 and then last year at Wyoming. So Willie is very athletic, he's very talented, but he is very passive. In the Dactronics Open, he came right out and scored and I thought, new Willie, but then he proved me wrong. 
And I say that only because I'm so impressed with his talent. I'd like to see him use it more. Oklahoma leads the dual 10-0. We're at 141 pounds. Willie McDougald and Gabe Willishell. I don't know if you'll recall, but when Willie came as a freshman, he was put in the lineup, and he was a hero for the crowd. He oh, was yeah. winning. He was coming from behind, but he was wrestling more. A little more aggressiveness. Also got to get your stance down so you can get your shots off. There's one. Okay, knee pick. No score approaching 20 seconds left in the opening period. I would like to know, and I was actually at that Big 12 Championships, but I can't remember how he pinned Willie because he's tough on top. So no score at the end of the opening period. At 141, or 149, I should say, Willie McDougald and Gabe Willishell, two 50-year wrestlers. Willie has spent his entire career at Oklahoma. 50-year wrestlers that are probably sophomores, the way things are going. <laughs> you have wrestlers that are wrestling in their seventh year. You do. Yep. Between COVID, maybe you had an injury somewhere. And it's great. Get all the education you can, Coach. There, you can get a, a couple of master's degrees by the time you're all said and done. <laughs> and, of course, NIL is such a big factor in all sports, and that's no different in collegiate wrestling. No, and you know what? I mean, there's good news, bad news. The good news is it's opportunity and it's, it's money for kids, okay? The bad news is it is completely unchecked. It is a monster, and it's going to be maybe the end of many Olympic sports. It's unsustainable. The quarterback that might be half a million, a million today is going to be five million uh, tomorrow. So they've got to put some checks in that. You you can't do a lot of this stuff in the pros. Good scramble there, and the rollout is an escape for Willishell. That opens the scoring in this bout. Yeah, in the pros, you can't just transfer teams at twice. You know, you have to wait till your contract is out. So it may be a battle on the mat. We'll see. Oh, we attacked by Willie. So Willie can shoot. He's got to work on his setups. But from that, you got to learn to control ties as well. It's tough to beat everybody from open. Michael Leitner, who had the best open shots, he had to learn that. Oh, right there was an opportunity. No, no, get your heel up. You got to get your heel up to get your leg back. Oh, nice finish. First takedown of the bout goes to Willis Shell. He has a 4 0 lead. We'll see. Nice coming right to your feet by Willie. Oh, 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 oh. Now that's that's just a lot, failure to pay attention. Turned, kind of walked away, and, and the guy re attacked. Could have been two. Could have been three. He got away with it this time. Could have been two plus one. 30 seconds left. No riding time of significance either way. A true 4-1 score in favor of Gabe Willishell trying to get the Cowboys their first bout win of the night. A little more motion by Willie now, but still out of his stance. Got to be down in good position. Nice snap by Willishell. Willie's not a big throw guy. Looking for that knee pick off the... That will do it. Under. So Willishell got the escape. We'll see if he starts. I'd say go down. You got yeah. away well. Just get up to your feet fast. So McDougal will start on bottom. And try to escape, make it 4-2. Clean well, start. Willie was a two-time New York State champ, second in the Big 12s. As a freshman, redshirt freshman. McDougal got a pin in Oklahoma's 
Opening win over Air Force was two and one at the Dactronics. Now meet. there's that athleticism and look at that single drive drive with your feet. <laughs> Long time left in this one. When you turn that corner you got to drive that shoulder and get the opponent's weight forward. Then you yank that leg back. So the stalemate brings him back. Neutral. He's got a double and doubles hard to it's a lot easier to finish on when you get both those legs. Willis shall look like look like he's going to come so you wait a little bit see if he comes. Try and chase the corner. That's what he did. Couldn't quite get there. So Edinburgh program has been down in Pennsylvania, but where there you go. He's in on that double. He's going to run out of real estate. So back up and take the single and bring it back in. Look at this. There's two. Three. There's three. three. There's three. And Willie McDougal <laughs> has taken the lead here with two 45 seconds left. Look at that now. Get those wrists. McDougal with some late energy to produce the takedown. And now 33 seconds left. Neither wrestler is going to have riding time. It's truly 5 4 McDougal. And he will start on top here. Look at the ankle. Get that ankle and drive, then tie up the wrists. Instead, he's high on him. And a caution there to McDougal on top. It's a four-point third period for McDougal to come from behind. He was down 4-1 coming into the final frame. Drive, drive, drive. Okay. Get that wrist. McDougal returns him down. 20 seconds left. Keep that leg. Keep that leg up. I'm gonna give the one up. Out they go, and one point for the escape. So we're tied, five-five. And once again, there is no riding time either way. 12 seconds left. Can either wrestler manage a takedown? Oh, I'll tell you what. Nice opportunistic shot, but there was a chance for a go behind. Don't just stop those shots. Now, We're here's the deal. See how Willishell is grabbing that wrist so tight and Willie keeps trying to pull it away? Pull it, then lead it. There's a great opportunity for a duck under a high crotch there. Sudden victory time. Look at Willie, though. His hands are on his thighs. Get in your stance. And you can see Willishell. He's like, let's go. He can tell that he may have a little more gas in the tank at this point. I'm telling you, I would wait for one second for that shot. There's a re-attack, and there's the two. Willie McDougal with the takedown. The re-attack grabs the double and finishes it. There's a time you can see the opponent is going to shoot, wait on it, and re-attack. Tian Weil was the master. So McDougal wins 8-5 in sudden victory session number one, and Oklahoma takes a 13-0 lead in the duel. And let me tell you, that was a tough win against a tough competitor. So impressed with how Oklahoma is wrestling. You know, aggressively, you admire Willishell for doing that, but McDougal, just enough gas in the tank to move out of the way and counter. Yeah, so what Willishell didn't do was set up his shots. Okay, he wasn't setting up his shots. Stutter, keep your opponent off balance. Don't let him know when you're coming. It's all Oklahoma so far. They've won the first four bouts, and we move on to 157 pounds. Carter Schubert for Oklahoma, and a former Oklahoma Sooner, Jared Hill, who's ranked number 22 this week who for like, Wyoming. Who, like Mr. Brooks, wants this match big time. But here's the deal. You're going to say this, see the same Jared Hill that you see regardless of how bad he wants it. Okay, he of course wrestled here and transferred uh, to Wyoming, but he does not do a whole lot. He holds good position. Uh, his best move is a double leg, has a wicked double leg. He'll come up to a bear hug. 
Now he's coming out strong, but he'll slow it down eventually. Jared Hill is from Broken Arrow High School. Won two team titles there and an individual title. And then three years in Oklahoma Sooner. Went to the NCAA championships twice. Two times finished sixth in the Big 12, both 2023 and 2024. And he is coming off a win last night against Cutter Sheets at Oklahoma State. That was in sudden victory session. Yep, yep. And Cutter Sheets, son of the great Mike Sheets, they said came up a weight and really battled heroically. Carter Schubert, the redshirt freshman from Marion, New York. He's a transfer from Cal Baptist, spent one season there at both 157 and 165. And in fact, he got a win against Wyoming last year at Cal Baptist. So one of my former wrestlers at Baptist Bible College 100 years ago actually pastors in that town and he used to coach the high school team. Uh, but he hasn't done that for a while and he hasn't been in there, so he really didn't know. Just still feeling each other out here, Schubert Carter. and Hill. Good stutters, keep a guy off balance. When that hand's at, chop it and then post it. Tell you, very impressed, well coached team, this OU team. And I think they kind of took the wind out of Wyoming's sails right away because Wyoming, they wanted to flex some muscles coming off a really a strong performance, even though not a strong result. But Oklahoma State's great, third ranked third in the country. Minute left here in a scoreless opening period. And a stalemate. Yeah, Carter, I think, is going to have a fine future in front of him. Redshirt freshman. Nice motion on the part of Jared Hill. So broken arrow. That's that's Sooner territory. Head coach Rod Jones, three-time All-American here, and say runner-up. Biff Jones, uh, Big 12 runner-up to the NCAA champion, and just a beast. I think he'd have had the accolades Rodney had as well as if if he had gone up weight. Biff could wrestle, tough kid. Other brother Sean was the state championship coach there, several years. Steve Dunlap. I'm not sure if Steve was a Sooner, but Steve was a great coach, great tradition of Broken Arrow. And I'm forgetting now, but I spoke with Coach Jones, and. They just built the largest wrestling room in the country. It may be 16 mats. It's, it's wow. uh, whatever it is, it is unbelievable. So no score through one period at 157 pounds. There's a caution on bottom issued to Jared, or on top, I should say. Oh, wait, they did call that on bottom to Schubert. Sooners got an upset at 125 pounds. Antonio Lorenzo upset number two, Jory Volk. And a major decision by Moshe Schwartz at 141. Willie McDougal to come from you behind be win in sudden there. victory at 149. So what happens, he's got that wizard, but he doesn't have the, the hand off the waist. So Hill still has that seat belt. He can get his hips inside and put you in trouble. Or what he likes to do is bear hug from there. So you get that wizard, you got to use it. Schubert gets one point for the escape. Things starting to heat up, crowd getting into it. Yeah, that's not a surprise. Uh, Jared's not, doesn't do a whole lot on top. It is a home football game for Oklahoma tonight. So we've got some football fans. We're in here, McCaslin Fieldhouse, right next door to Gaylord Family Memorial Stadium, where Oklahoma and Alabama will kick off tonight at 6.30. Alabama, huh? <laughs> You've heard of them. I've heard of them. Yep, 
Yeah, we're all rooting for Coach Venables. It's just been tough. Last week would have been big, I think, had we pulled that off. Okay, pressure him back. So sometimes you got to wrestle for the caution. Hill has been issued one. You back him off the mat here, you might have another. There, there, there you go. Okay, but the other was a caution. Right, that this was a warning. First, first was a caution. Yeah, okay. this is stalling for the first time. The first was a caution yep. for starting too soon. But that's an important one. Look, Hill's still going backwards, so maybe you get in the flurry and back him out. He's probably not just going to walk off again. Ah, there's that shot. There's that bear hug. Get your hips inside. Throw that. Oh, throw that underhook hard. Ah, looking for a Metzger. It's a good job scrambling yes, there. Yes, real good job. He was in trouble. He didn't quit. So Schubert avoids being taken down by Hill and takes a 1-0 lead to the third. Schubert will start on top. 26 seconds of riding time is what Hill ended up with, so that's not a factor right now. Yeah, Carter starts on the right. He likes to lace that leg. He can ride a leg in on that side. Ties up your wrists. But Hill's right to that short sit. He's good in there. Okay. Lift that leg. Buckles him up around the waist again. And he has just about eradicated the riding time that Hill had built. And here he's keeping that heel just barely inside the circle. Finally, they go out. And there's a warning, the second one to Hill. So Schubert's going to get a point for Hill leaving the mat. Yep, he just crawled out of bounds, and you can't do it. Now, Jared's got a good stand. He also can Gramby, so you got to first look where his ankles are. He's giving them to you. 2-0 in favor of Carter Schubert. And there he goes on the ankle. Now, drive, okay. I don't pull him back in your lap. And an escape there is the first point for Jared Hill. Now, true 2-1 score with a minute 15 left. So you see how important that first warning was. Backing him off, you can't give those up. Now look, you back him up again. One minute remaining, one minute. But Benya needs a little more. That freight train double of Hills can be trouble. Oh, oh, oh. Nice knee pick off a pancake. And there's three for Jared Hill. He oh, takes the lead, 4-2. Yeah, Jared's tough, and Jared is very opportunistic. 45 seconds left in this bout. Jared Hill comes through with by far his biggest offensive play. Hill you maintains know, the left foot. Here's the deal. It's five seconds, but the bottom line is they don't have to just call because of five seconds. Continue dropping to the ankle. That should have been a warning right there. Roger Kish up urging Carter Schubert, but only 18 seconds for him to get something done. What Schubert wants to do here is kick out and make him go back to the leg. Schubert can't struggle to his feet. Uh, that's just Hill has gained down. control of this one. And with the takedown with 45 seconds left, the former Oklahoma Sooner Jared Hill defeats Carter Schubert of Oklahoma. <laughs> we could do without the theatrics. I'm not a big fan of all the posing. You know, but I'll tell you what, it was a tough win, and he took it. So 13-3, it is the first bout win for the Cowboys. It comes from former Oklahoma Sooner Jared Hill. He gets a takedown with 45 seconds remaining in the bout on Carter Schubert and a 4-2 decision for the Cowboys. We reach the midway mark of this duel. Oklahoma won the first four bouts. 
and they have a 13 to 3 lead. We're going to step aside for a little intermission here. We'll be back with the 165 pound bout at McCaslin Fieldhouse on ESPN Plus.
Back with you at McCaslin Fieldhouse in Norman, alongside former Oklahoma Sooner head coach Jack Spates, Chad McKee with you at the midway mark of this duel between the Oklahoma Sooners and the Wyoming Cowboys. Oklahoma winning the first four bouts, and really the tone setter was the 125-pound win for Antonio Lorenzo over Jory Volk. It, it seems like maybe that's been a little contagious for the teammates of Antonio Lorenzo, Coach. <laughs> there we go. Well, that's the wonder of sport. You never count anybody out. There were a bundle of people here who didn't think he won, could win, but not Antonio. So that set the stage. They have wrestled hard, well, opportunistic, and poised. Very impressed. To 165 pounds, Tate Picklow of Oklahoma and Cooper Voorhees is out there for the Cowboys of Wyoming. Now, if you look at Tate's loss in the uh, uh, Dactronics Open, he tried to do everything from space. That's not him. I sent him a text. We're friends. His dad coached for me and told him to go back and watch the match in which he actually beat teammate Gavin Sachs when Sachs took North Dakota State. You went forward and you got your hands on him. That's where he had his best, and he's following it right now. Cooper Four, he's a fifth year wrestler from Rapid City, South Dakota. He got major decision up in Stillwater last night. His dad, Brent, was an All American at Wyoming. 
Tell me the best two wrestlers ever to come out of South Dakota. Oh, gosh. Don't know. Lincoln Riley and Randy Lewis, two of the all-time greats, two of the most exciting wrestlers for different reasons in NCAA history. Tate Piccolo was at 174, so he's he's bumped up or down to 165 this year. How, how does he look to you making the uh, weight change, Coach? He, he actually looks real good, but I'm going to tell you something. He should be in the Guinness World Book of Wrestling because as a senior in high school, he wrestled 195 was going for his fourth or fifth state championship on one leg and wound up losing in a squeaker, but at 195. Came here as an 84-pounder. Eventually dropped to 74. Now he's at 65. Lorenzo is a senior. When he graduates, they move Piccolo down at 125. <laughs> Keep that reinforced wizard hard. Get some pressure on that thigh or that shin. Tate's a great athlete. Good kick out there. Okay, drop those thunder hips. He's got strong hips. Keep those hips down. Don't try and go around too fast. Then your hips come up. Jam them with your knee, then get those hips back. Now he's turned the corner on him. We're in trouble here. Good balance, nice. He's got that arm blocked off with his left hand. When you can split like that, you can stifle a lot of shots. Mm -hmm. So they will restart them neutral with 34 seconds left in the opening period. I call that the Johnny Thompson split. Johnny Thompson will be smiling if he's listening in. Great Oklahoma State wrestler, great guy. Tate's got to work on setups. He's got a real good double, good high crotch. Pretty good single, but you got to set it up. And that will do it for the opening period. No score between Tate Piccolo and Cooper Voorhees at 165. Oklahoma won the first four bouts of the day, and then Wyoming got a 4 2 decision at 157 from former Oklahoma Sooner Jared Hill for their lone bout win so far. Piccolo starts on top. This this is a big bout. It would put a nail in the casket if he comes out on top here. Get a wrist on the back. Oklahoma State ride. Yeah, too much floating. He's doing a good job. Too much floating though. Voorhees gets those legs free and to his feet. I, I, they shouldn't have given the one until that hand comes off the hip, and it is off the hip now. So there's the escape, and the first point goes to Cooper Voorhees of Wyoming. Right, good call by the official not calling it initially. You do that to Jared Hill, and he'll just crush you with a bear hug. Tate is very vulnerable to open shots. Get a pass by there, Tater. Oh, oh, keep driving on that heel pick. Tate Piccolo had a injury in 2022, that, that season, and then was fifth at the Big 12s in 2023. Was at 174 pounds last year, eighth at the Big 12 championships. Well, and to be honest with you, great kid, great family, great talent, but I think every time that Moshe Schwartz was in the hospital, his roommate was Tate Piccolo. So I'm teasing on that, but both guys are charter members of the all-hospital team. Maybe that's just bundles and bundles of matches and moves throughout the years. one nothing is the lead here for Voorhees. 
So Piccolo starts on bottom. We'll try to escape and tie this bout. 34 seconds of riding time there for Tate Piccolo. And there's a caution issued to Voorhees. And one of the things is Wyoming is so tough on top with with uh, legs and cradles, but you have not seen that. OU's done a great job on bottom. First point of the bout for Piccolo is the escape to start the third. He actually maintains 31 seconds of riding time, so if he could get a takedown, he could get to that one minute pretty quickly. Yeah, and this is, this is, perhaps I shouldn't say this, but his first move of improvement is to get a headgear that fits you so you don't keep adjusting it. You don't want to get bit in the butt adjusting your headgear. Okay, get some scrambling going here. Get your stance. Come in in your stance. He's had some pick attempts. You got to do it with more, okay, with more authority. Only points escape from bottom for both wrestlers. Voorhees to start the second, Piccolo to start the third. And there's three at a critical juncture for Cooper Voorhees. 4-1 lead for Wyoming. Yeah, don't push up, push back. You've got time. A one and a two. Voorhees is going to, I thought they were going to caution him or warn him, but instead they warn Piccolo. And that would be a one and a three. By the third year, you ought to have that down. 29 seconds left. And now Piccolo's got to get out quickly and try to get a takedown. Yeah, four point is not a quick takedown move. There's another escape for Piccolo. Now needs the takedown. 15 seconds left. Voorhees will try to hold him off. That actually gives. Oh, there, Piccolo <laughs> with the power move right as time expires. And I think they're going to go take a look at this just no, to see. Was he, there control? I think he had control there. I think he had control. The referee, the official, the match judge, rather, was nodding to him like, yes. Now, they both have to look at the replay, but there's an example of you don't quit, you don't stop. I was done. I thought it was <laughs> over. Okay. The take Piccolo with about three seconds left with the takedown of Voorhees that's now being reviewed by Carlos Mansell and Evan Burchett, Matt side. For now, it's an Oklahoma win of 5-4. Wow. There was not a significant wizard. It got better. But it still wasn't deep even when they stopped it. And this was at the, the referee's discretion to review this as Mark Branch and his staff did not have to throw in the challenge. It is a takedown and it is a win for Tate Piccolo with two seconds left in the bout. He wins 5-4. That was big time. Not a great performance for the Tater, but he's hardly had any training in wrestling. So a big time win, actually. And Oklahoma takes a 16 to three lead in the duel with four bouts left. We will move to 174 pounds. So we've seen some heroics a little bit by Willie McDougald at 149 and by Tate Piccolo at 165. Gavin Sachs coming to the mat for the Sooners. That's a well-coached team wrestling from whistle to whistle. If you look over at my sheet, I had put the score in 13-6, <laughs> so the teacher just got taught. That's okay. So here's Still? the eighth-ranked wrestler in the country, Gavin Sachs, transferred from North Dakota State. Spent four years there, three of them wrestling under Roger Kish before Roger became the head coach at Oklahoma. I think that's going to do wonders for Tate's confidence as well.
But once again, everything stands. If Wyoming is in a good stance, you can't inside trip a guy in a great stance. Bout number six finds Oklahoma with a 16 to three lead. Gavin Sachs had a win against Air Force. This guy that reached the blood round at the NCAA championships last year was the Big 12 runner up. That was at North Dakota State. And he's one of those guys that is a 50 year wrestler. He started at North Dakota State all the way back in 2020 21. A lot of mat time in his college career though. Well, that kind of broke the back of Wyoming right there. Oh, nice double leg, but Gavin Sachs has good hips and he's he's a scrambling king. He's trying to get behind the arms with no control. Oh, look at that. You see that right there? He cross faced him, but what he did was get the wrist under the nose. It's not so much as turning the guy's head as get under his nose and lift. The guy will let go. Sacks tough with legs and especially tough when they're on the opposite side, on the right side. Now he's going to get some near fall points against Short. Legs to Kratom. And there's four near fall points for Sacks. So a quick 7-0 lead and still just a little under a minute left. He'll be able to build a full minute of riding time if he can keep this up. No, absolutely. I'm not sure he's going to need riding time, though. Not the way he's going. Gavin Sachs out of St. Robert, Missouri. Now, the opponent doesn't want to come up, so there's a caution there, a warning there. A lot of times officials will call stalemates. It's not a stalemate. There are moves that you have when a guy has legs on you, but you got to do them. First is throw that hip and get your opponent under you. So it's going to be a three point takedown, four near fall points, and a minute 25 of riding time. Pretty complete opening period there for Gavin Sachs of Oklahoma. Very impressive. He will start on bottom. Ken Short has been out with injury. And a quick escape. 8 0 in favor of Gavin Sachs. Very impressed with the Sooner team. And I think, I think Wyoming had the spirit taken out of them. You're right, it started at 125. Yes. So the deal is, if you look at Gavin Sachs, not a great stance, a little high, but he didn't care if you're in on his legs. It was a, a guy from ancient history by the name of Wade Chalice, and he would dare you to take his leg. One of the, he and Gene Mills, two most prolific pinners in wrestling history. There's three more for Gavin Sachs. Yeah, we're looking at a tech fall here. The possibility of it. Back Brett McIntosh here. He has wrestled at 157, 174, and 184 for Wyoming. Near fall points coming. And if four come, it will be a tech fall. Nope, just three. So 14 0, 15 seconds left here in the second period. So, young wrestlers, you got to learn how to do the boots. 
Yeah, I can think of some great, great leg wrestlers that Oklahoma had. I'll, I'll name two of mine. Uh, Byron Tucker would make you cry. He would put a leg in, and we would cover our mouths because we didn't want the opponent, opposing team watching us laugh. And uh, then the guy would start just screaming. And Robbie Waller, another one. All through the NCAA tournament, both guys, the opponents would say neutral, neutral. You go in a point ahead. So as they start neutral, Sachs would just need a, a takedown of McIntosh to finish off with a tech fall for the Sooners. Well, this has been a complete performance for Oklahoma. Going to win six of the first seven bouts if Sachs continues this. No, and a lot of poise and a lot of opportunism and a lot of never quit. There were matches that were over. There were matches you thought were over before they started. And the Sooners under Coach Kiss said no. One minute remaining. Riding time is secure, so that would make it 15 0 for Sachs. Now, Garrett's tough. Nice sweep single of his own. Goes to a seatbelt. Okay. Oh, once put a leg in on the other side. And watch the wear and tear on the shoulder there. They call it dangerous position there, and they'll start him neutral again. 34 seconds remaining here at 174 pounds. Yeah, this is this is good. This is a confidence builder for uh, Oklahoma. In some respects, it's more dominant. Well, only because Oklahoma State, there was such high expectations that I think Missouri surprised in some respects. But coming into this match, it could have been way more competitive. That'll be no score, and that will wrap it up. Complete win there for Gavin Sachs. Real nice win. He gets one point for riding time. It'll be 15-0. A tech fall for Gavin Sachs. 15-0 And a 23 McIntosh. lead, is it not? I'm it not, is. I'm not good in math, but. 21-3, you get five for the tech fall. You're not good in math. <laughs> huh? <laughs> so Gavin Sachs adds five with his first tech fall of the year. And we move on to 184 pounds. That is DJ Parker. Math and I are not friends. This is the match I want to see. I was so impressed with Nittenbach uh, last night. I mean, he battled hard against national runner-up Dustin Plott. The match was a lot closer than I think it was 9-4, but so much closer than that nice shot. So here's DJ Parker, the redshirt junior for Oklahoma, transfer from North Dakota State, two years there. Look at that aggressiveness. And Eddie Neidenbach, freshman out of Valley City, Ohio, Buckeye High School. As Coach Spate said, he lost 9-4, but that was a good performance against the NCAA runner-up from Oklahoma State last night up in Stillwater. Real good performance. And you just took away my trivia question of the night. I was going to ask you, he's from Ohio. Can you guess what the name of his high school I've was? got it right here. It's Buckeye. <laughs> I read the roster, Coach. There we go. One step ahead of you. As always. Neidenbach started his first match as a freshman against Campbell. Got a major decision in his first appearance in a Cowboy singlet. I watched DJ in not a great Big 12 performance a couple of years ago, but he really impressed me. He was at North Dakota State, and I thought this kid can be good, and I think he's going to be. He wound up fifth that year at the Big 12 championship and then had a medical redshirt last year. Now in Oklahoma Sooner. Look at the balance there. Guy's got his leg all the way up in the air. Looks like he's going to score.
Okay, oh, real nice leg attack. Didn't seal it, but real nice chasing the leg to a leg attack off an opponent's shot. One of the key drills in wrestling. Oklahoma wins in six of the first seven bouts this afternoon. Getting bonus points. Well, and as we've said, it's not just that they won, it's the way in which they won. You got bonus points from Gavin Sachs and Moshe Schwartz. Both coaches thought this could be a bear of a domain. Nice unhook throw to a single. Back in on that single. Good aggressiveness by DJ. But not a takedown yet. Got to run that pipe. Oh. And there's three for DJ Parker. Kind of big boy in him there. Came off the leg, which I don't recommend, and clubbed the head. Not when the leg's on the inside. Parker's got his headgear down around his eyes. Get that taken care of and a 3-0 lead with 24 seconds remaining in this first period. Let's see a first move on top. Nice in that claw. I'll tell you though, Neidenbach is good against legs. Powerfully returns Neitenbach to the mat. And that'll do it for the opening period. DJ Parker for Oklahoma at 184 pounds with the takedown unanswered by Neitenbach. That unanswered is big too. So let's see what he's got on bottom. Neitenbach will start on top. Now he's got a good stand. Parker built 33 seconds riding time after his takedown. Fairly quickly gets to his feet and out. And right back on the stance with motion, stutters, keeping his opponent off balance. I like it. Can't let him know. Now watch right here. The guy's got your wrist. Lead it. So the road runner open to follow. This is a great way to go into that. Nice head down hands down defense every time night back shoots that was a warning against night for fleeing the mat what I don't like about that is he just took two shot attempts you know so remember one of our guys lost a match one time this freestyle we shot we shot again we took a third shot and we've traveled so far he steps out of bounds and we get a warning against us mm. I think they're, they're maybe going to replace DJ Parker's headgear at some point, perhaps in between periods. He's having trouble with it sliding down over his eyes. Maybe he borrowed Tate Piccolo's. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. He likes it up top. Tried to do a Metzger off that. Throw it by. He likes to do that. You've got an underhook, and as the guy's coming out of it, you throw it by. Out they go, and a restart neutral here with the three nothing lead for DJ Parker. Thank you, pardon four nothing with the escape in the period. Two non math scholars, no doubt. Oh, nice shot! Nice shot, and a quick three there for Neitenbach. We'll see if it's going to be unanswered to close out this period, and it, it will be. And a very timely takedown. So 4-3 in favor of Parker. 
But a late takedown with under 10 seconds left in that second period makes this one close. It looks like they will elect Parker Will to start neutral. Neat avoid an escape. Night back real tough with Mike's. Stay on your shots. Keep your good head position. Wyoming has to have a six-point victory to keep alive any hopes of at least a tie in this duel, or else Oklahoma secures the duel. Nice Park. high crotch. Head, head inside. Now he's back outside. Get some height on it. Good hips by Neitenbach. Neitenbach gets that leg. Parker still hanging on. It's not two. Assistant's going crazy over there. Still no score. No score. If he builds his back up, be okay. Probably going to be a stalemate here. And we do get the stalemate call. I'll tell you, that was tough because he was flattened out. And DJ just really having some significant trouble with his headgear in this bout. Keeps slipping down. That, that's the first order of business. Yeah, a couple of those. Yep. That tape Piccolo had problems, as you said. 52 seconds left, 4-3 in favor of Parker. No riding time advantage of a minute for either wrestler. Now anticipate that shot. Maybe even give him a little more leg, and then as he goes, run the corner. Oh, counter he, there by Neitenbach. Yeah, I thought he was good, but we like the underhook. We're out of it now. Get some stutters. Keep that guy off balance. Parker grabs okay. the left leg, the knee. 15 seconds remaining. And out they go. Now that was nice. That was nice on the part of Neitenbach. What he did was he was in trouble and he jammed with his knee and then took his leg back. 14 seconds left. DJ Parker trying to hold on for Oklahoma. 10 seconds remaining. Bring them home. Head down, hands down. And a shot there by Neitenbach. Parker able to clear his legs. And he will run timeout and get himself a 4-3 win at 184 pounds. Oklahoma leads the duel 24-3. And another hard-fought win by the Sooners. That was not an easy match, and that's not an easy opponent. That is the third match today decided by two points or fewer. Absolutely. This match could have played out completely different but Oklahoma wouldn't let it. They have wrestled extremely well, extremely hard, extremely opportunistic. And DJ Parker's win secures the duel for the Sooners. Two bouts left. And out there is Bradley Hill for Oklahoma, Jared Novak for Wyoming, the number 16 ranked wrestler in the country. Here we go at 197. Oklahoma has secured the duel as you see the score 24-3. Sooners winning seven of the prior eight bouts. So Mrs. Novak just called in and said her son's name is Joseph. Joseph, okay. Uh, that wasn't a bad attempt in grabbing that leg, but Wyoming, Mr. Novak likes that Merkel position. Joseph Novak was a top 50 recruit out of high school, lost a close one up the road in Stillwater last night to 11th ranked Luke Serber. Boy, that was a battle there. NCAA qualifier last year. Already has two pins on the year. He was fourth in the Big 12 a season ago. And Luke Serber had just come off a big win off of Munoz from Oregon State. Of course, Munoz's dad being a national champion at Oklahoma. Don't go around the waist. He gave us a wizard. Use that wizard. Reinforce it. See, he's got it loose. He's not using it. Bradley Hill, the Iowa transfer for the Sooners, but was a heavyweight at Iowa, now 197 as a Sooner. NCAA qualifier last year for the Hawkeyes and 
was fifth in the Big Ten championships. We're talking stalemate pretty soon here. <laughs> Interesting play there by Hill. We've got a minute left in this period. We've thought for about a minute we're going to get a stalemate oh, they're, or they're out, out of bounds. bounds. There they are. No, there was not a three there. No takedown. And that was just toughness on the part of Bradley Hill. I'm not seeing a lot of T on wear there. Not a lot of athleticism. Hill wrestled unattached at heavyweight at Iowa two years ago before becoming a starter last year. And of course, we lost the number one ranked uh, wrestler in the country that went to Iowa, uh, three-time All-American Stephen Buchanan, and he just got bought away. Too much money, and, and he made the right decision. With him leaving, the heavyweight wound up leaving and getting a deal at Michigan, and that totally changed the complexion of this team, which would have been amazing for OU and Coach Kish in just two years, bringing him back certainly close to the top ten. A lot of variables. You got to stay healthy, but that's the oh. thing about the transfer portal. It can make you good quickly, or it can decimate you quickly, right. one way or the other. So no scoring. Opening period here at 197, and it looks like we will see Novak elect to start down. 24-3 in the duel. Oklahoma won the first four bouts, including an upset at 125 pounds. Antonio Lorenzo of Oklahoma upset number two, Jury Volk of Wyoming. So they're not going to know what to do in rankings because he just lost to two kids in a Dactronics Open, and now he comes and beats number two. <laughs> and uh, But why that is so important is when it comes time to qualify for the NCAAs, Big wins like that are important. Oh, he's looking for that roll. Now you gotta get a wrist off that. Novak <laughs> not quite out yet, and instead he may get a reversal, and he does. The old high school switch, re-switch. Mr. Novak did a little hip heist and came out on top. Okay, walk you back up. And the escape. So 2-1, as Hill has his first point of the bout. I like the fact that Hill's going forward. His head's right in his opponent's face. Not a lot of quick twitch, but he had a nice shot earlier. Yeah, back him out. Get a warning. 30 seconds left in the second period. I'll tell you what, this is the third guy that's preoccupied with fixing his headgear. That's got to change. You take off one ear, just one, and they'll never do that again. <laughs> you speak from experience on that. <laughs> I'll never tell. Nice single. Boy. Ah, you got to turn the corner. Okay, you can come out the back door too, but this is a good scrambler. But no points out of it. So no back, the reversal, and Hill and escape, 2-1. Joseph Novak leads headed to the third period. This would be a minor upset if Bradley Hill could pull it off for Oklahoma with that one bout a, left. That would be amazing. I believe we're going to win at heavyweight, so that means we'd have a more, if he wins here, then that's a more dominant performance than Oklahoma State had. And that is a very, very good team. I'll 
tell you, we won't call it until the referee calls it. Not today. We have certainly learned that. Yep. Late okay. Oh, take grab down. that ankle, the far ankle. Drag your hips in. Stalemate. There we go. Stalemate time. Well, this will leave the Sooners undefeated on the season. They've Today. Moved two and oh and two and oh in the Big Twelve. Both wins, one over yeah. Air Force and one over Wyoming. Well, we're tied for first then. Hard to dispute that. <laughs> and under a minute left in the third. Down to the wire we go once again here at 197. Oklahoma's Bradley Hill and Joseph Novak of Wyoming. You gotta get your head up. So when a guy has your leg lace, post your foot so he can't get his leg out, then lift your knee and drive into him. He has to topple over. And that's the beauty of this sport of wrestling. There are so many moves. You can actually create your own. Penn State has changed the culture of wrestling with play wrestling. Get in situations and just play around and experiment and see what you find. And wrestling's a lot more fun when you're learning new things. Oh, Joseph you know Novak one? trying to hang on. He's got riding time secure at this point, though. So that would make it 3-1. I think we, we have a caution there. We Coach, had a warning, a warning for stalling, issue. And, and I'm not so sure. That's what Mark Brantz is kind of asking. Now he says, just get down and he finish this sure. thing. He is sure. <laughs> He's sure. It's wrong is what he's sure of. Yep. And there's a caution. Hill starting too quickly. So once again, riding time is secure for Novak. And he'll wrap it up. The second bout win for Wyoming. Final is going to be 3-1. That'll make the dual score 24 6 Oklahoma with one bout left. And I I just don't think and in talking to them I'm quite sure that either of those coaches anticipated a score like that in either direction. Kevin Zimmer to the mat for the Cowboys. He is a retro sophomore from Orland Park Illinois his second season to be the starter at heavyweight for the Cowboys. And now on the mat for the Sooners is 24th ranked Juan Mora out of Turlock, California. Spent two years at North Dakota State. And this is his second season at Oklahoma. And we lost an outstanding heavyweight. Josh Heindelman went to the All-American round last year. Had a great, great wrestler beat. Just lost at the end, but Juan Mora is doing a great job. I like it. He's going forward. Gets right to his tie-ups. Got that underhook first. Now his collar tie. Now Mora had two top 25 wins at that Dactronics Open in South Dakota and had a win in the duel against Air Force. He's got a quick shot in on the left leg. Yeah. Oh, nice run the pipe. There's a clinic on that. And there's three for Mora. Look at that quickness. Zimmer was pinned by Oklahoma State's third ranked Wyatt Hendrickson at Stillwater last night. That would be Wyatt the Beast Hendrickson. Great kid, great citizen, of course, as a member of the Air Force, but also great wrestler. People say, is it better to be tall or better to be short? And the answer is yes. So you have to wrestle your body, and, and Juan does a good job of that. Down comes from down up. A 
Oh, once again, that nice single with a strong back. And three more for Juan Mora. He has a 6-1 lead. And now he's got a lot of time left in, in this period. Riding time, perhaps you get a tilt. But two impressive takedowns. Tell him, Coach. Give the tilt signal. What would you do? Turn him loose and try and take him down? <laughs> well, it all depends if I had a tilt. Six two now, Mora. Now that tilts, you got to learn your tilts. Cheap and easy points, so good coaching. I've learned from you over the years. <laughs> well, then I'm going to get you an exhibition bat the next match. <laughs> I'm out. He'll pick there by Zimmer. See if he can complete his takedown, and he does. Good action here at heavyweight, Coach. Yeah, that changed the situation very quickly. Already three takedowns Good in this opening on period. Let's see if Mora can get away or if it's unanswered. A good job there by Zimmer to keep him occupied. Looking like it's going to be an unanswered takedown there by Zimmer, and it will be. Good activity at the heavyweight bout. 6-5, Oklahoma's Juan Mora on top. And Zimmer will get the choice. He wants to start on bottom for Wyoming. The complexion of this match has changed fast, has it not? It has. Mora came shooting out of the gate, but gave up that takedown to keep Zimmer in it. Not a huge fan of the four-point stand. I know a lot of guys can do it, but... If you learn an explosive stand or a changeover to a stand or a turn into a stand. There are guys who are really good on top if they can stop that first move and tie you up. I like the look in Moore's face. You can see it. He wants to wrestle. He does. Yep. It's funny, those little things that you see, sometimes you can just look at an opponent mm -hmm. and know this guy can be had. Get after him. And sometimes you look at him and know this is going to be a fight. And Zimmer gets warned there for fleeing the mat. And that's really big. Now, if he's in the lead, he can't skate at the end. Or you get another one of those, too. or you can force him into a bad shot. And as close as it appears as this one is going to be, you're right, that could be huge at the end. So the only point here in period two is the escape by Zimmer. Not the activity we saw in the opening period where we had three takedowns combined. So there's a guy by the name of Zare who wrestles uh, for uh, Iran. In the, he was just second in the Olympics, and he's either won the past Olympics or world championship. And uh, he just backs you up, backs you up, backs you up. Two periods down, it is 6-6, six, six. no riding time either way. In fact, it's only 28 seconds for Mora. Now he's going to start on bottom. Try to get out quickly and see what you can do over the final two minutes. And nice he slides explosive. out fast to take the explosive lead. Explosive move off the whistle, not a four point. And that sit out and turn in. If it's not an, a move to escape, then you use it as a setup for something else. 7-6 Mora, and as we said, no riding time for either wrestler at this point. Now there has not been a caution issued to Mora yet. 
and you know this, Zimmer's got to come to you, so you wait a second and see if he makes that shot and you can capitalize it on it. Another thing you can do here is you take a knee dip shot to provoke that re-attack, but you're waiting for it. So you're doing a knee dip shot, you know you're not gonna get it, you're coming right back up, and then you're gonna re-attack. Near go behind after the shot by Zimmer. And a minute left for Juan Mora to try to close it out for Oklahoma. Sooners have long since secured the dual win. But this would be the exclamation point at the end of the sentence for him. This would be amazing. Nice stance and position, Juan Mora. When you get that underhook, you have to flex. Now he can't limp his arm out so easily. Back him out, back him out. Zimmer's going to have to find a little magic in the final 20 seconds. The shot attempt and Mora able to scoot back out of the way. That was a, the first warning against Mora, so bear that in mind. Final 10 seconds. Neither wrestler wants to get that second warning. It'll be a point. Mora backs away two seconds, and Juan Mora will hang on for a 7-6 win to close the day for Oklahoma. And the Sooners take the duel 27-6. Oklahoma wins eight of ten bouts. They get bonus point wins by Moshe Schwartz at 141 and by Gavin Sachs, a tech fall at 174 pounds. This was not as close as we thought it was going to be, Coach Spates. This was an amazing match with a well-coached team that did just about everything right except fix their headgears. So very proud of this effort and a big building block for the future. And I will say this also, Roger Kish is... Done it, done it. 